in this video we will learn about graphs and how we can construct graph how we can interpret them and what are the advantages and disadvantages of mostly used graphs and how we can draw day-to-day -day activities graph like temperature time graph velocity time graph pressure volume graphs so the expected background knowledge required for this lecture is drawing and making axes, drawing rectangles and plotting points, and practice of reading graphs. So um, basically graphs are the best way to represent facts and figures. And if we represent these in a interesting manner, only then they are attractive and uh, take the attraction of viewers. So uh, in this video, we will try to make these graphs bar, pi, frequency polygon, and histogram in attractive way. So uh, the advantages of uh, graphical representation is that in less time consuming, and easily understandable, and we can interpret result by eye inspection way. So graphical representation is the eye inspection way are the visual representation of the data set in which we can see and interpret the result. But the major disadvantage of graphical representation is that uh, here we cannot tell the detail of each and every value or this gives us the lack of detail like it, it is less accurate. So we cannot uh, tell the high accuracy in this uh, so uh, the graph which we are going to discuss in this video includes bar, pi, frequency polygon, and histogram. Let us start with the bar graph. Bar graph is the simplest type of graphical representation and we have the following types, simple, double, divided, and applied in different situations according to the requirement of data set. So uh, the construction of bar graph includes the following step. You need to take, uh, take the graph paper and draw the two lines on horizontal and vertical axis. And you have to take the variables along these axes, like you have to take the frequencies along the vertical axis and values on the horizontal axis. You need to uh, choose the uniform width of the bar and uniform gap between the bar. And you have to choose the suitable scale to determine the height of the bar along the axis and mark the axis with proper length. So by following these steps, you can easily construct the bar graph with accurate width and height of bar. So uh, consider this example. The number of trees planted by an agency in different years is given below. Here you can see the data set of 1997 and the trees planted in 97 are 400, in 98, 450, and so on in 2002. 1500 trees are planted. So total trees 4700 are planted in this example. And now we want to sketch our plot, our, uh, make a bar graph of this data set. So uh, when we construct the bar graph of this data set, this is our constructed graph in which here we have taken the uh, shears on X axis and on Y axis, we have the number of trees planted. You can see here we choose the equal width of the bars and equal gap between the bars and equal scales we have set here like 200 gap start with 0, 200, then we take the 200 gap, 400, 600, 800, so on, 1600. So we select the uh, frequency here with equal interval and we label the axis like here on x-axis and frequencies are the number of trees planted in, uh, in these years on y-axis and the title of our graph is the bar graph which appear here 
on the top. So uh, this is so uh, by adopting this step, we construct the graph and we can interpret this graph like the maximum trees are planted in 2002 and we can see the increasing trend in the plantation uh, the number of trees are increases in with the year increase and we can see the equivalent difference in 97 98 99 and 2000 so uh, in this way we can interpret the bar graph and can answer these questions like in which year the maximum number of trees were planted what trend the number of trees planted shows in which year the number of trees planted differed by 50 only you can see the maximum number of trees are planted in 2002 as the bar peaked here so the maximum trees planted in this year so now come on the second question what trend the number of trees planted show? You can easily see in this figure, this is this shows clearly an increasing trend. So uh, the figure shows an increasing trend here. Next question, in which year the number of trees planted differ by 50 only? So look at the figure, you can see there are 50 difference in 97, 98 in these two years and in these two years. So uh, the difference of the trees, number of trees planted different by 50 are in two years 97, 98, 99 and 2000. So uh, in this way you can interpret and answer uh, the questions of graphical view. So this is all about the bar graph. Now our next graph is the histogram and frequency polygon. Histogram is another way of graphical representation in which we have continuous frequency distribution that is in form of globes. So uh, this, uh, this graph also have two axes, vertical and horizontal. In both axes, you have to take a, and choose the scale and you have to choose the equal width of bars and the difference in histogram and bar graph is that in histogram, the bars are joined, whereas in bar graph, the, uh, you can see the gap between the bar. They are disjoint. They are not joined with each other. Whereas when we construct the histogram, you can see the bars are joined. There is uh, no gap between the bars or construction of bar. So uh, for histogram, we need the class intervals and frequencies. And for polygon, we need the midpoints and frequencies. So if we join the uh, middle points of histogram bar with the line, uh, it also gives us the frequency polygon result. And if we want to construct the frequency polygon separately, then we need the midpoints. And uh, against the midpoints, we need the frequencies to draw or plot the frequency polygon. So uh, here are the steps to construct the frequency polygons. You need midpoints. You need the graph paper on which you have to plot two axis frequencies and uh, midpoints. So these points are joined with a straight line and this gives you the frequency polygon result. Now take an example. The following is the frequency distribution of weights of 30 students of grade 9. Draw a histogram and represent the data. So here you can see the classes and frequencies against these classes and you have to construct the histogram. So to construct the histogram, you need to draw two axes and label them like we have classes on x-axis, frequencies on y-axis, and the title of this is histogram and the width of bars are equal and they are joined. There is no gap between the bars. And uh, this is the histogram. Very easy to construct. Simply take the classes on x-axis, frequencies on y-axis, choose the equal width of bar, select the scale here and draw it. 
and this line, straight line, which passes and crosses the middle of bars is known as frequency polygon. So you can sketch the frequency polygon on the histogram as well. So in simple bar, the height of each bar represents the frequency. The thickness has no significance. All bars have the same thickness. And in double bar graph, we want to compare two things. And in frequency polygon, the frequency is plotted against the midpoints. So uh, this is about the uh, histogram, polygon, and bar graph. As these three graphs uh, are used to represent our uh, visual inspection of the data set on of the same level, or same measured on the same scale. So the detail of pie chart, our construction of pie chart, we will discuss uh, in detail in our next video uh, how we can construct the pie chart and how we can um, differentiate the pie chart with the other chart of which data set are useful uh, for the construction of pie chart. So I hope so the concept of uh, histogram and bar graph are clear now and you can easily differentiate between bar and histogram that in bar graph the uh, graphs or the points are disjoint or there is gap between the bars. Whereas in histogram, no gap, no uh, jump between the bar, they are joined. And polygon is simply when we join the middle points of these bars, we can get the frequency polygon. So this is all about the three graphs. Uh, if you want to construct these graphs in Excel, I also provide you the link here, uh, how we can construct these graphs in Excel, so you can see that as well. Thank you.